What makes it possible for all of us to live on Earth? Oh, Nina, you're taking off like a rocket. You haven't even welcomed everyone to Engine. So I'll do it. Hello, everybody. This is Engine, the program that shows us how life works. I've got so much energy, I was getting ahead of myself. Today, we're talking about fuels, the stuff that feeds us and gives us energy. What do you call it, the stuff of life? Ugh, think of it this way. If we didn't have fuel, we wouldn't have fire or heat. We'd be cold and hungry and living in the dark. Does that mean we wouldn't be able to watch TV or play on our phones? It's even worse than that. Nothing is worse than that. We wouldn't have internet or cars, trains and trucks. We wouldn't have factories and fridges. Worst of all, we wouldn't have engine to learn about all these things. I hope you're going to tell me that we don't have to worry about the fuels we use and that everything is okay. Not quite, because we rely on something called fossil fuels. Oil and gas and coal. But we have options, you'll see. Let's go and meet some friends in Nigeria who will tell us more. Ibrahim, welcome to my town, Kaduna. These are some of the problems we face with fossil fuels. Hello, everybody. My name is Amrachi, and this is my city, Abuja. And this is how we use fuels. I decided to join my friends who were curious about what kind of energy we use in our city. Fuels are anything that burn. We have petroleum, um, we have diesel, which is gotten from the ground. But don't you think they are not healthy to the environment? They're not. Yeah, they're not How's your day? But these fells, are they harmful? Yes, they yeah. are, because they release smoke harmful and these harmful gases yeah. to the environment which burns the ozone layer and it's not healthy to man. Well, I think there's a way it can be global. solved. Yes, I'll say sun. green energy, which can be gotten from natural resources such as okay. sun. the sun, the wind, water. the water. Seems like we knew a little bit about energy and fuels, but not enough. So we decided to ask an expert, engineer Muhammad. Uh, energy is the ability to do work. In order to have the ability to do work, you need what? Fuel, right? Can anyone tell me what fuel basically is? Anything that can burn. Can burn, right? Generate energy. Gener energy for you to have the ability to do work. Brilliant. Fossil fuels are hydrocarbons. They are naturally occurring fuels, mostly the ones that we use, um, that, are, that are gotten either onshore or offshore. So what that means is they are get gotten either on land or the in the sea. That's right. These guys are really brilliant. Once the natural resource has been extracted from the earth, they've been refined, right? Yes. So refined into different uh, chemicals that are used as fuel, starting from uh, petrol that we are so used to and running our cars, putting in our generators to have electricity in the house, uh, putting in grinding machines uh, for small businesses and so many other applications. However, um, as much as um, these fuels offer great opportunities for development and make the economy and um, life easier, they also pose a great threat to the environment, right? Yes. So it starts from the process of extracting the oils and also burning them. And there you have it, energy comes from fuel. I have a question. Good to see your brain working. It must be getting good fuel. <laughs> 
Where does fuel come from? Okay, so remember engineer Mohammed told us that oil comes from land and from the sea. Yes, but how did it get there? Oh, that's easy. It started long, long ago, like 300 million years ago, when living creatures would die and sink to the bottom of the big, big prehistoric ocean. Think of millions upon millions of dead creatures lying in the water and through time, it changes and becomes oil. But how did we find it and how did we know what to do with it? We humans must have seen the oil seeping through the rocks and because we like finding things out, we found a way of using it. So we used it to create light in our lamps and we even used it for medicine. Medicine, wow! But what does it even look like before it's changed into petrol or diesel, kerosene or paraffin? It's sticky and stinky and yeah. gooey. <laughs> Eve, is that a scientific description of what oil looks like? Hey, yeah. I'm just describing what I can see, which is the first step in any scientific process. It looks like there's a lot of that sticky, stinky, gooey stuff around. Well, you'd think there's a lot of it because we use it for so many more things, but these fuels took long, long time to make, and we're using it up very quickly. But we actually have to be really careful how we use it. The other thing is, because we use so much of it for different things, it's creating problems that are not good for the planet. Is there something we can do about it? <sighs> There's always something we can do about it. Let's find out what our options are for Mariam and the gang in Nigeria. In Abuja, we met another green energy expert, engineer Michael, and joined him at work. Does anyone have an idea where electricity comes from? The one you use in your houses? I think it comes from fuel. So look up. Can you see the pole? Can you see the cable? So these cables you see are what brings the electricity that is produced from a very far away place. Then it's transported okay, through these cables. Then it comes down to a transformer. Then it comes into your home, schools. But there's a better way. And we've come to this house to show you guys a better, cleaner way of generating electricity. So this is a typical solar panel. So once the sun starts to hit the solar panel, it starts to generate and convert the sun energy into electricity. It has cells. Each of these cells generates electricity. Generator, the word, what it means is something that um, start up something like your old generator that you know about you pull fuel inside it generates and creates electricity it's connected to another cable that will come into this basement where we'll have our inverter and battery and that's simply how it works you have the solar panel that generates power okay that's going to the roof so now we have the inverter that's the second part. They've collected the electricity that was generated from the solar panel on the roof through cables. What happens if the sun goes out? Does that mean that there will not be electricity again? Um, start in the battery. Fantastic, <laughs> high five. Good job. So the battery, basically, when the sun goes out in the evening, the batteries are there. For what? For storage. The more batteries you have, the more electricity you can store. This house runs on 16 batteries. Let's go! Let's go! It's technology. technology. Mr. Muhammad showed us another house powered by green energy, generated from sun and the wind. This is a model of an actual building located somewhere in Abuja. Uh, it's called the greenhouse. It does not have diesel generator or even a petrol generator. It's fossil free. It has the solar street lights, solar panels to generate electricity from the sun. You may not have heard of this, it's called solar water heaters. So they utilize the sun's energy to generate hot water that you can use uh, in toilets and in the kitchen. Engineer Mohammed has a green energy solution not only for our homes, but also for our streets. This is uh, one of our most exciting products. Uh, it's called the Integrated Solar Street Lights. Okay. 
So what it does is uh, provides um, illumination at night on streets so that you could drive safely. It has a solar panel on the top to absorb solar energy, right? The batteries, uh, the batteries inside is inbuilt, similar to the mobile phones. And then you have the LEDs just underneath here that flashes lights onto the ground. It's made to work automatically. That now detects when it's night, and then it, come, uh, it triggers the light on. Yeah. When the sun comes up, it triggers the light off to allow the solar panel charge the battery. The light is on now. All right, good job, guys. Do you know that when we move our body, we get the oxygen to flow to our brain, which then helps us to learn and remember things? Let's go. Today, we are going to do something very high energy. Are you ready? Look at this. Hop! 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 So make sure your both hands can touch the knee. Hop! Let's do quick. And you have to just enjoy, enjoy, yeah? Yeah, enjoy and quick. Now quick run, quick run, and change direction. Here we go. And come back to center and look at me. You have to have fun of this, okay? And now let's twist abdominal. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <sighs> I told you it's gonna be high energy. Well done! Make sure you include physical activities in your daily life. Dance. Run. Jump. Whatever gets your heart pumping. So, we have learnt that the sun gives us energy to power our homes and our streets, just as much as fossil fuels do. And there are great examples of it on the African continent. Egypt, South Africa, Kenya, Namibia and Ghana are leading the way. They have built big plants with hundreds of solar panels that can make electricity for big cities. Look at that plant in Egypt. A whole field of solar panels, or this one in South Africa. We can harvest energy from the wind too. The Lake Tokana Wind Farm in Kenya is the biggest one in Africa. Just wow. And you know what's the other best thing about sun or wind energy? Sunlight and wind are free. I'm so glad we don't have to use up all the oil that is still underground and under the sea. I suppose we still need it for the big stuff, like flying planes and running big, big factories. <laughs> yes, but we have to find better and safer ways to use fossil fuels if we're going to continue using it. We have to use less fossil fuels and more green energy from the sun and the wind because it's healthier for us and for the planet. We have to get off the grid, as Michael said. That's the plan. It's a pity we can't use more green energy to cook at home. Most of us still use coal and wood. You'll be very happy to know that there is a solution to that too. Do you want to know why I started making happy stuff? Yeah. So I, I, was, I was sent to greet and stay with my grandmother for some time and she asked me to cook for her. And I was cooking on a tree stone stove with firewood. It was smoky, my eyes were hurting me and I was coughing and I said, oh my God, is that how everybody that is cooking with firewood is suffering? I said, I need to do something about that. And I started researching and then I made happy stove that is smokeless, it burns very fast 
and it's clean to the environment and to myself. Can we go and see? Yeah, you're lucky because we are actually cooking delicious plantain wow. on Happy Stove this afternoon. charcoal from three branches so we don't have to cut an entire tree to make a charcoal. The clay inside is called a ceramic liner. It keeps your heat right inside and you do not have heat escaping. That means with little charcoal as this you'll be able to cook your big pot of plantain. You can see our plantain cooking. You can stand here. Is the heat burning you so much? No. So what if you were cooking with plenty firewood? <laughs> what happens? Be There's a lot of heat and there is what again? Um, smoke. Yes. And the smoke hurts your eyes. Your eyes will turn red. Your eyes will turn red and you'll be coughing. <laughs> but are you coughing now? No. No, it's smokeless, it's clean. <laughs> It's easy to use. It smells so nice. Yeah, it smells nice. Using less charcoal for cooking is such a good idea. But did you know that you can make green charcoal from banana peels, coconut shells, or even poop? This way, we can save trees and reduce the amount of waste. We can save our planet and we can save money too. Science, you. The sun is the cleanest type of renewable energy. It can never get used up. By using solar energy, we can preserve the non-renewable sources such as trees or fossil fuels. Let me show you how to make a simple yet effective solar oven using materials found around your home. You will need a pizza box, clean film or clear plastic, some silver foil, tape, and a stick or pencil. Cut three quarters of a square out of the lid of the pizza box. Make it big enough as this is your solar panel, but leave one side attached. Tape one piece of foil to cover the underside of it. Open the box and tape your clean film to the underside of the lid so it is covered. Be sure to make a decent seal as this will trap the heat in the oven. Use the stick wedged into the little holes in the sides of the box or a pencil to prop open the lid. Your oven is ready to use especially if the day is hot. Place the oven in a sunny spot in which the solar panel faces direct sunlight. The solar oven uses the sun's rays reflected onto the sealed food to heat and cook. Wait, wait. Wait and eat. Yum! Be sure to recycle this oven when you're done. Are we invited for dinner? Not just yet. We've got more work to do, more things to learn. But we need fuel for that and human fuel is food, isn't it? Uh, you got me there. But can you wait till after we find out about cars that don't need petrol to run? I'll try. It'll be worth it, I promise. Get ready for a long trip across the continent. Car. Let's find out more. Hi, kids, how are you? Fine. Uh, this is an electric car. Have you ever heard of an electric car before? No. Does it look any different? Um, no. And what makes it different from mommy and daddy's car, which is a fossil fuel car, is the fact that we are not using petrol. 
or diesel to drive it, we are using electricity. When mommy and daddy are driving their car, there's usually smoke that comes out of the back, right? Yeah. What does that smoke do to the environment? Pollutes the environment. It, it smells bad, it makes the environment dirty, and then it does something called global warming. And what we are trying to do is solve that by making electric cars. And what this electric car does when you drive it, there's no smoke coming out from behind. There's no exhaust behind there. So there's no smoke coming out. So you see, when you drive an electric car, what are you doing to the environment? You're helping it. You're helping it. So this big thing that you're seeing here, this is a battery. It so has, have to charge it. This has batteries and other electronics inside that help the car to move. So you see, how do you charge it? You see like a phone? Connect a cable. Yes. So the same way with this electric car, you now go to a, a charger and you plug it and then it charges and when it, once it's full again, you can ride away just like before. Where is the charging point where you plug in the charger? Ta-da! So this, this is a charging port. So you plug it to a charger and then it gets to charge the batteries. So it's really what cool. happens if the battery dies on when you're on the road? We are now putting up charging stations instead of gas stations. When your battery runs low, then you can just drive to the nearest charging station, right? So this is where you come and bring your car when the battery is low so that it can be charged. So you can see it's a picture showing a car getting charged, right? The same connected. as a, an engine bike, like a petrol bike. And then all we do is remove the engine and remove the fuel tank and we replace it with the battery and the motor and you're good to go. This motorbike is now electric. So one, there's no noise. When it passes you, it's completely silent. And like the cars, it also has a Gee. Exactly the same way like in the cars, we have a charging port. Now for this one, you unplug your battery like that and then you remove it and then you take it to a wall socket like this one and then you can stop anywhere to recharge your battery. Isn't that cool? So here is where it's high and then yes. here is where it's low. So now this one... This is the horn. Do you want to press the horn? <laughs> Right now we are working on building a bus so you can take rides in electric buses and that will reduce, what did we say, to the environment? Pollution. Uh, pollution. pollution. Good job, yes. <laughs> electric vehicles were there even in the 1800s. What? What? They're not a new invention. It's just the batteries that were being used at that time were dying down very fast. So now there's new technologies where we have batteries that can run up to five years without you having to replace them. Let's take a moment to slow down and focus. Taking some time to pause is good for us to help us stay calm. Today, we're going to learn a breathing exercise called the flower breath. So let's try this together. Let's imagine we're smelling a flower. Breathe in through your nose as if you're smelling a flower. It has a sweet scent. And then breathe out through your mouth. Breathe in through your nose as you smell the flower. One, two, three. And then breathe out through your mouth. One, two, three. In, one, two, three three and out one two three in one two three and out one two three we can use the flower breath whenever we want to take a moment to slow down what do you need to be able to study in school to build one of these oh 
you need to study science like you're doing now and you need to study a course called engineering like myself i'm a mechatronic engineer and with your curiosity and your innovation and your big brain then you can be, <laughs> can be able to to build an electric car like this that'd be cool like you make a car for yourself mm -hmm. and now like you ride it yeah. then you can see like what mistakes you've done that you can fix exactly just like an engineer that's yeah. exactly what we do that was quite a trip all across the continent and back who that burnt up a lot of fuel we even went Ooh. far far back in history to find out how fossil fuels are made but we use fossil fuels to travel around and that can be a big problem. It's only a problem if we don't find solutions and from what I learned today, we do have solutions. True, we don't have to burn fossil fuels for everything. We can use the sun, the wind and even the waves of the sea as fuel to make energy. I like the happy stove that made good food for us to eat so that we can grow strong. The happy stove is a very good idea because it uses things like fallen tree branches for fuel rather than fossil fuels like petrol so we don't have to use something that can't be replaced because tree branches are everywhere in the forest as long as we don't cut down living trees. These are good things to remember. We've got other things to remember as well. Yes, let's look, let's ask, and let's love. And don't forget to make it fun! Are you enjoying Engine? Post your comments on our Facebook or Instagram page at Engine TV Africa. Has the show changed the way you look at science, the way you approach learning, the way you see the world around you? Let us know and you might be invited to appear on the show. 